And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. Uh, Joan Moosey's not with us this week. She will be back next week, so stay tuned for all you Joan Moosey fans out there. And joining us in the studio are the principals of the band Leftover Crack. We have standing next to me Sturgeon, who's the lead singer and the, the leading light of the band, Leftover Crack. Leading light. And mm -hmm. next to him is Bill Cashman, who's the manager. Not the manager. Not associate. The man, associate. Friend. Associate, associate friend. <laughs> supporter. Uh, Helper. Right. Uh, and right uh, off, uh, right on right off camera. Esquire. Esquire. You can yes. just l l do it later. Esquire. Okay, Esquire. <laughs> you're live on the air now. We can hear you. That's Priya, who's been on the show several times before. And Not once. Twice. <laughs> That's <then. cool. laughs> and we'll have Priya on a little bit later. Um, so, um, and uh, we're here live, by the way, in the studio, and fans of Leftover Crack, and anybody who has any questions, of course, is uh, invited to uh, call the number that's on your screen, and we'll try to take your calls and answer your questions right here, live on the air, because we are live on Let Them Talk. So, uh, guys, tell me a little bit about Leftover Crack. Uh, wh where did you get the idea for a name of a band <laughs> called Leftover Crack? I don't know. I think somewhere 10 years ago, I was hanging out with a friend, and trying to think of new oxymorons mm -hmm. and we were smoking crack a little bit back then we stopped doing that but we thought it was funny you know when those jokes that kind of doesn't seem so funny after 10 years but it's not I'm not ashamed of that name it's all right it's not the only band you, you also have another group that you're working with oh uh, right now I was I'm with star fucking hipsters that's an interesting name yes how'd you how'd you get that name I don't know what, they, what it sort of is what it is, right? It it's a long story, yeah. It, it means a lot of things. Right? Not really at all. It means like two things. Mm -hmm. We can take it two different ways. Right. I, I, I prefer to be vague about it at this point, right. though. Right. And in oh. 10 years, it might not be as funny. Right. So. It's not really fun. It's supposed to be funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Bill Cashman, how did you hook up with this uh, near to well here? Um, I, I guess we met about 10 years ago, and I was about the first uh, fan, first, like, I just liked the band a lot and ended up becoming good friends and going on tour with them and then um, ended up moving in to Sea Squat. Uh -huh. Sea Squat? What's Sea Squat? Sea Squat's where we live. On right. It's a C. What's a sea and what's a squat? Sea is a an avenue. An avenue and a squat. Uh, it's just, a, it's um. It's uh, complicated at this point. Yeah. It's not exactly a squat anymore, but it has been a squat for most of the past. Mm -hmm. 18 years or 19 years. An abandoned building that people took over about 20 years And we fixed ago. it up, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, people can continue to live in and you've actually gotten some level or some degree of, uh, of legalization that you're yeah. allowed to be there. But the other thing is that Sea Squad has become quite a name you know, among young people as a, as a birthplace of music. It's one of those places that seems to be uh, connected with new sounds. Yeah, when I was, when I was, I'm from Jersey and when I was sneaking out of the burbs to come to New York, like, it's way cooler than CBGB's, man. That place, that place was lame, you know. C Squad actually has like a performance space, and bands actually play there as well as live there. Yeah. And give shows and what have you. That's wonderful. Now you were just recently at a show, at Tompkins Square Park, <coughs> on Lower East Side. I was there at that show, and uh, uh, that was it. It was the 20th anniversary of the Tompkins Square Park riot. Why did you participate in something that was marking a, a riot that happened 20 years ago in Tompkins Square Park? Well. My, I've been in bands that have been playing, I think, out of the last nine anniversary shows. We've, done, we've been on seven of them, and, uh, well, it has a lot to do with the police and bringing attention to this, this era when, when uh, I mean, it's still continuing, but the police were really had this riot where they taped their badges up and uh, beat the hell out of everybody in the neighborhood, basically, uh, in, a, in an attempt to, I think, evict people from the park and to gentrify the neighborhood of the Lower East Side and uh, we just like to bring it, bring attention to the fact that this happened because news coverage of things like that are uncommon so if we have big gatherings and we talk about it then people are aware that this actually happened. 
I want to talk more about it, but I think that's a good opportunity to play a sample of some of the music you, uh, that Leftover Crack plays, and this is actually a video of the show at Tompkins Square Park, and you're going to still be able to see us, and we're going to just brought, project it behind us, so you can watch it there, and you can listen <coughs> as well, so uh, check it out. walking the streets, they're too busy to fucking catch Sean Peasers, pedophiles. The prison system in the United States is chock full of nuts, and by nuts I mean people that aren't really hurting anybody else, they're just fucking nuts. But the drugs are good, delicious stuff. Drunk in public, whatever. Arrest some winners and rapists. Leave us all alone. people at that show. That was the Tompkins Square Park on what, August uh, 3rd. 3rd? Is that when it was? August 3rd already. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, 